The second thing we're working on is a much more scalable blockchain. We've been using Ethereum today, and you know, to be honest, it's I call it the you know the dial-up era of blockchains. You know, it's like dial-up, like the picture is coming in like this, like click, 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 click. And you know, as we've been using Ethereum and sort of trying to shoehorn it into Kick, it's been super complicated. Um, you know, we have to like add all these fees automatically on the users' behalf because they're not going to understand that they you know they have kin, but they also need Ether to pay the gas to get the transactions to run. Um, the scale is very low. You know, even at 10,000 users, we're starting to push the limits of what the Ethereum blockchain can handle. And then even just, you know, reliability. <laughs> like, the crypto kid is crazy, takes off, right, as we're launching the next version of Kin on the Ethereum blockchain. And, oh, guess we got to wait for three days while this crypto cre uh, kid is crazy uh, passes through. And so the, the number two thing we're working on is moving to a new blockchain. The blockchain we're targeting right now to move Kin to in sort of the, the Q2 second quarter timeframe next year is Stellar. Uh, so Stellar was built by um, the guys that built Ripple. And the thing we really like Stellar is it, it's custom built for an application like Kin. It's not like Ethereum where it's trying to be everything to everybody. And that makes it sort of general purpose and slow. Um, it's being very focused in what it's trying to solve for you. you know, very fast, reliable, and inexpensive transactions for a lot of people. And so we're evaluating that now. Uh, Stellar makes great claims around their scalability. We will be low testing and confirming those over the next two to three weeks. And assuming that, that goes well and Stellar beats the claims that it says it does, uh, we hope to move to Stellar in the second quarter next year. And then finally, the third thing I would say is we want to start showing the world what's possible with a cryptocurrency. Um, I think cryptocurrencies are really misunderstood. Uh, a lot of people look at cryptocurrencies today like Bitcoin and say, hey, you know, this is a great you know, replacement for dollars or something like that. Let's use it to buy coffee and hamburgers. But that, that doesn't make sense to us. Um, what we really think can, a cryptocurrency can in this case, can be really good at is facilitating the exchange of value between people in the digital world. In the digital world today, we have billions of consumers participating in all these different services, providing value to each other, you know, offering great advice, hosting great experiences, creating great content. There's only one problem with that today, and that's that none of those people get paid. People are offering so much value, but it's these big services that are taking that value, layering advertising on top, and keeping all that value for themselves. But when you look at you know, traditional currency systems, they don't work for this digital world. Um, this digital world requires sort of a you know, financial system that can, can recognize and work for the use case where you know, if some kid in Venezuela hosts a great group chat, for example, and in doing so, somebody on the other side of the world wants to join that group chat and is willing to pay one one millionth of a dollar to do that. That's where the current financial system just doesn't work. The current financial system is built for the physical world. And that's really where we think there is a new opportunity to build a new system for the digital world, what I call the digital sharing economy. It's like the sharing economy with Uber, Airbnb, I'll drive for you, you drive for me, I'll rent you my apartment, you rent me your apartment. But now it's in the digital world. I'll host a great group chat for you, you host a great group chat for me, I'll create a great sticker for you, you create a great sticker for me, I'll give you great advice on how to program your app, you give me great advice on how to program my app. And that's where we think a digital currency like Kin can really work. And so the third thing we're working on is Showing the world, I think, what's possible. We've been working on this, thinking about this for a very long time. You know, we launched Kick Points back in 2014. And so the third thing we're going to do is inside of Kick, but also inside of other apps, is show the world what Kin plus X looks like. What does Kin plus messaging look like? What does Kin plus live streaming look like? What does Kin plus a game look like? What does Kin plus fashion advice look like? And building out all those experiences and open sourcing them all, giving them all away with the, with the goal of 
inspiring developers around the world to take up those projects, have a great starting point on day one, have a user base on day one, and have the ability to monetize on day one through the Kindle Rewards engine. So that's the third thing we're going to do is really build out the integration of Kin inside of Kick, uh, but we're also going to launch a second app outside of Kick, open source that from day one, and show what Kin plus X can look like outside of messaging.